Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Aya Nashkash. I'm Cheryl Hentz and um, tonight's show is a little bit bittersweet. Um, we've got the incoming and outgoing school superintendents from the Oshkosh Area School District with us tonight. Um, and um, saying goodbye to Stan Mack is, is going to be a sad moment. Um, hopefully I won't tear up and hopefully he won't tear up. Um, but on a joyous occasion, we have the incoming school superintendent, Dr. Vicki Cartwright here tonight also to talk about um, you know where she'd like to see the district go during her tenure here. So welcome to both of you very much. Well, thank, thank you. you. So, well, Stan, let's start with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's get the sadness out of oh, the way first. Sure. But, but your time here has not been all sad. So, um, You were originally going to retire in December, and then that got pushed sure. back until mm -hmm. June. Right. By the time this airs, it's um, not a charity. You, your it's more time charity. is actually up it, on June 30th. Right. So by Absolutely. the time this airs, that mm -hmm. will be passed. Um, but... Um, you know, it got pushed to June 30th, and what happened with that? Oh, I think well, it's more board, of a... the board needed a little more time to deal with the search, and uh, uh, they got kind of um, nervous about um, having adequacy for um, soliciting uh, uh, strong candidates for the position, and uh, uh, they looked to me, and I was available, and um, I uh, said, no, that rather than have an interim superintendent, um, why not have someone with experience for the next six months and finish out the year? And for me, it was far more comfortable. Most superintendents do retire on June 30th. That's usually the contract year. And um, uh, and my family was kind of pushing the issue of, um, they had some winter plans that they thought would be a great idea, but um, we overcame those issues. And um, I am so joyful that I uh, stayed the additional six months and um, been able to um, really uh, celebrate uh, along with other faculty and staff and administrators in, in retirements and enjoying uh, uh, this. And I don't think there's a finer month of the year than June, and June is a wonderful month to retire. So I, it I is. think it's... Uh, well, and it makes sense, you mm -hmm. know, from just a logistics standpoint. Right. So um, no, it, it worked out well. And um, and who knows, we might not have found Vicki had um, uh, we uh, been on a different time frame. And sure. this gave opportunity for the transition uh, to work well. Sure. And, and we've had the chance to um, work between... Uh, 70 and 80 hours together since um, since uh, March and um, feeling uh, uh, telephone calls as well as uh, uh, one day plus a, a couple of um, uh, full weeks. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, uh, as I've told the school board, we've created an opportunity for the uh, smoothest transition. Uh, and um, for this past week now, uh, uh, Vicki's been cap camping out at uh, a table in my office <laughs> and, um, and she can just move across the aisle and um, be at the desk uh, starting on Monday. Well, and, uh, let's talk so. to her then and, <laughs> and um, sure. you know, welcome, first of all. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm so glad to be here. your first appearance on the show and we hope it'll be one of many. Um, but, um, you know, you're, you're filling some big shoes yes. for sure. Um, so tell us a little bit about your background, uh, personal if you want, but certainly professional. Sure. You come from Florida, and one of the questions I want to ask is why <laughs> you would come here with our horrible winters, but tell us a little about yourself. Oh, well, it could be, although this show's not going to be aired until later, um, if people will rem remember what this weekend is going to be like, uh, that's that's Florida um, pretty much all the time. All the time. Yeah, and Central Florida, you know, um, and it's, it's, it's to be said that, um, you know, because I went and had my final checkup and, you know, physical and that kind of stuff before I came, and they're like, uh, we're going to, on your blood test, we're going to check for your vitamin D. And I'm like, why are you checking my vitamin D? And they said, well, because most people around here in Central Florida, believe it or not, have a vitamin D deficit. And I'm like, we're really? in the sunshine state. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. No. It's because we're inside all the time. We oh. don't go outside. It's so hot and so humid all the sure. time. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah. so today, you know, Stan, Stan came in and he goes, boy, it's hot out there. And I walked out and I went, oh, this is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> this is mellow compared to Orlando. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So tell us about, um, you know, you are coming from 
is it the fourth largest school district in the nation? Ninth largest. Ninth largest. Ninth largest okay. uh, district in the nation. Okay. And um, you know our enrollment numbers will vary um, depending because we uh, we do have a, a highly mobile um, population as well. So sure. we're approximately two hundred and seven thousand students. They're wow. about two to two hundred nine depending yeah. on time of year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm very excited to be coming from there and um, in Orange County because we're so large. Uh, we geographically break up into what we call learning communities. And so uh, we have five different learning communities um, and then there's the district uh, positions as well. So mm -hmm. I was in a district um, level position as an associate superintendent for exceptional student education, um, so which meant that I oversaw that department, but for the entire district. Um, I also supervised some schools um, and these were special needs schools. Uh, for students who had significant of significant uh, needs that okay. we could not serve in the regular classroom or in, a, in one of our regular schools. Okay. Um, so you've got quite a, a varied background there. I do. I do. Mm -hmm. I actually started off, uh, believe it or not, as a high school band director. A band director? Yeah. I, no I noticed, <laughs> um, I don't know where it was I saw it. It might have been a newspaper article, mm -hmm. might have been somewhere else. But I did notice that, you know, music is, is it. it takes up a lot of your background yes and so um, you know before we get back to Stan you know arts are always something that seems to be the first thing on the radar screen yeah. when budgets get tight yeah. and things need to be cut yeah. um, uh, you know I think we have a pretty good arts program in in the Oshkosh area school district Absolutely. so um, you know having someone with a music background I think is going to be helpful mm -hmm. in explaining to folks why things within the arts should not be cut from the budget. Absolutely or even athletics as well because mm -hmm. those are your top two areas oftentimes and just what you can achieve and even the, the brain development, yeah. um, the, the creativity uh, that come from arts, um, from, uh, from your athletic standpoint, being able to learn how to work within a team. Yeah. Um, you know, and there are certain athletic sports uh, such as like soccer. Um, so if a, ch a young child plays soccer or learns how to play piano, because the feet are crossing over yeah. and because yeah. the hands are crossing over, it actually influences the brain development. Hmm. Um, and it allows the synapses to actually be a little bit more organized, okay. um, which increases your ability to learn. Sure. Now, do you have children who will be in the district or no? No. My son is 19 years old. Okay. Um, he attends Stetson University right now, and he's actually mu a music performance major. Um, oh, wow. So he's on, on uh, full music scholarship there. Wow, that is fantastic. Which is wonderful. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. I like to see kids who are not in trouble with the law or anything else. Oh, so. oh, oh, no. <laughs> if that were to happen, we would have a problem given uh, my husband not, is also a school district administrator. Um, so, as I mentioned before, we're the learning community. So, within the learning sure. community, there's um, area superintendents, and then under the area superintendents, there's executive area directors. Okay. And they supervise all the schools within the learning community. So, my husband's an executive area director. Okay. But the chuckle for that comment is he's also a full deputy sheriff. Ah, okay. He, he is works he still the down there then? He is. Okay. He is. He is. Does he plan to move up here? Or? At, at some point in time, we're looking for him to join us. Okay. Um, timing of the year, trying to get him up here, um, sure. finding a, a job that's uh, reasonably located. Sure. Um, it didn't work out to, as as well, and but that's okay. Yeah. Uh, and it was it was getting to the point where he had to make commitments for next school year because sure. they're already in full swing for of opening school. Of course. And mm -hmm. you know, Stan, your wife never really came here full-time either, not, right? Not full-time. She, um, Her consultant um, work um, uh, has her flying a lot out of um, Appleton Airport, but um, uh, but uh, uh, I, she's been here in the last, her first year she was remained a principal in uh, Minnesota and um, uh, here about 50% of the time uh, uh, ever since and sure. it's worked out and uh, mm -hmm. uh, she is fulfilled and uh, and uh, Vicki's husband having a professional career that's what happens in these days with uh, two professions. Sure uh, you mm -hmm. bet. Sure. Well you've been here six years so how have you seen the district change in in the last six years whether it relates to budget or mm -hmm. 
Uh, certainly security issues have mm -hmm. had to be changed in recent right. years. Um, it could be in the kids learning, mm -hmm. um, you know, anything at all. It's wide sure. open. So how sure. have you seen things well, change? Well, I, I think, uh, first of all, the relationship with the community is the uh, first one because, uh, issue that I think is critical because um, uh, if we're going to garner community support either for past referendums, future referendums, mm -hmm. and uh, inability of the district to um, have uh, enough resources is constantly an issue. And, and to me, as I came six years ago, I noticed, in, and I have used those words often, that the community had turned its back on the school district, and the school district had kind of turned its back on the community. And uh, my work here was really to, how can we restore um, and trust so that uh, individuals uh, in the community would uh, think highly of of the schools have a good relationship with the schools mm -hmm. and have a trust factor that um, was critical and we work very hard on that in building relationships uh, once again with the community be it uh, uh, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, uh, the Greater Oshkosh Economic Development Corporation, uh, uh, our big corporations be, um, having Oshkosh uh, Corporation um, having uh, major um, partnerships with the school district and supporting efforts of the school district. All of those are critical and I'm, I'm very pleased with um, rebuilding those relationships. Uh, new initiatives in both of our high schools with um, uh, Global Communities at West mm -hmm. and, and the Communities Program at, uh, at uh, North. Uh, having uh, lots of, and in each of those, filter in their own way out into uh, the greater community. Having uh, in the Global Communities Group, having uh, a large number of students uh, this summer uh, travel to uh, Spanish-speaking countries, uh, uh, being engaged in a whole different world, seeing their presentations of, of understanding the, the issues of, um, of poverty around the world. Um, I, I think the scope of our students um, at West and uh, from the communities program at North having a sensitivity to um, uh, a positive relationship in the city and the community in which they're growing up and uh, I think is, is critical. But um, uh, building trust relationship and uh, working towards financial stability, which um, uh, it, it is nice this year with um, some uh, bell tightening, but uh, very limited of it um, coming within having a, uh, a, a balanced budget within 35 or $40,000 on, uh, on 12, $113 million budget. That's a very, uh, and in the end, uh, every year we've had uh, clean audits and in the end every um, school year we've um, ended up with actually uh, fund balance left over. Sure. Uh, we budget very tight, but um, uh, we're always pleased that we can uh, uh, come back to the community and say we've um, we've not overspent our budget and mm -hmm. uh, we've mm -hmm. managed our budget well. And those are critical pieces along the way. Sure, absolutely. The, the other piece that I think um, we've invested um, nearly fifty million dollars in retrofitting our buildings. To I'm be sorry, did you say fifteen or 50? fifty? Nearly, fifty. Nearly nearly okay. fifty million dollars in in retrofitting our buildings to become far more energy efficient. Mm -hmm. On replacement boilers. Vicki will never have to face the issue of saying there's a boiler out at School X um, and having to close school that day. And I'm sure um, she <laughs> thanks you for that. I do. I do. Yeah, because that, uh, that um, we have every single one and, and we have redundancy in most all of our buildings as well so that if one goes down we have a backup system and uh, it doesn't uh, keep us from occasionally having um, issues in a very deep freeze of winter where, where a um, uh, we have a frozen frozen water main or something like that sure. because we didn't put heat around those water mains but uh, but most of those are always in the street but um, uh, that investment is paying off as well because um, it every dollar that we don't spend in uh, nat on natural gas heating fuel is one more dollar that's saved for um, operations of the district sure. so you know another challenge that you had to face that i don't think probably no other school district in the country had to face other than those here in the state of Wisconsin was the passage of Act 10 mm -hmm. which um, I don't know if he's filled you in on that at all or not mm -hmm. so you're aware of it um, I mean it uh, really it pretty much decimated I think a lot of the morale with teachers mm -hmm. and you know that is something that you had to 
right. help rebuild. Right. Um, yeah, and that's, did you lose uh, teachers? We, we certainly did lose teachers initially. Uh, that process has kind of settled down, but initially yes. because not, uh, not so much, uh, well, Act 10 took away um, uh, peer tenure rights, uh, continuing contract rights. Mm -hmm. And um, so teachers could feel comfortable with leaving District X, that could be our district, and going to District Y, uh, maybe because their parents lived in that community and they had uh, uh, better um, child care programs. <laughs> There were a number of reasons that they could make moves um, with limited risk because mm -hmm. if they were good teachers um, in the past, um, they would be giving up X number of years of seniority and, uh, and service, and that was a risky move. Uh, a lot of that changed because of uh, uh, one of the provisions of Act 10 was taking uh, away absolute continuing contract or tenure rights, and uh, that was uh, uh, a significant cause. Plus, I added to it that um, uh, Oshkosh uh, compensation had been lower than a um, number of mm -hmm. neighboring districts yep. and individuals could um, move and get a, a gain in, in income and also risk little uh, to do so. But um, uh, if we look at the core of our um, uh, roughly um, uh, uh, Fifty percent of our teachers who um, were here before Act 10 and continued. Uh, we have a dedicated group of teachers who continue to remain with the district. Uh, we're members of the community and uh, uh, have made their way through this process. Uh, I wouldn't ever find a teacher, uh, nor many administrators, uh, happy with the outcome of Act 10. But in reality, um, uh, it, it, it has created a fair amount of havoc, but it also has created uh, new opportunities opportunities uh, for, uh, for teachers um, both here and elsewhere because we also can be the beneficiaries of a particular teacher who uh, is strong, uh, who is willing to take the risk and come to Oshkosh uh, and uh, start their career here. So it's worked both ways. Uh, sure. But it's, uh, it's a painful one and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, the dis disillusion of uh, teachers unions in, in there and uh, it, uh, it yeah, there's little impact on um, on the uh, Supreme Court decision of yesterday because Wisconsin already had uh, uh, abolished the um, fair share requirement, um, uh, and uh, but uh, uh, it is it's it has impact and it has impacted morale, but it is universal across Wisconsin. Sure, uh, you know one of the things that you've always kind of said is that you see yourself as a fixer, mm -hmm. the fixer, a right. fixer, and. Other than this relationship that was sort of, mm -hmm. I don't want to say it was fractured, but mm -hmm. it definitely was not where it should be, mm -hmm. the relationship between the district and mm -hmm. the, the public. Right. Um, how did you, I mean, I think you did a good job of fixing that. What other things have you fixed besides the problems with the schools? Oh, the facilities, and <laughs> I think uh, I think creating an atmosphere of um, open communication, mm -hmm. uh, respectful communication, and the excitement that I see with that in is uh, I've uh, I've gotten to know Vicky. Uh, she operates on a very similar style, and that's really the issue is um, uh, that um, uh, in uh, all of my career I have never raised my voice, I've never yelled, I've never raised my and I have never used an expletive with anybody anytime in, in my work. Wow. And, um, and by doing that so that uh, uh, whether it's a custodian who wants to come and talk to me or a food service employee or um, a, a teacher or a principal or a district administrator, they, um, they can uh, uh, walk into my office and tell me a concern or explain something to me and they know that um, uh, they'll walk away as a whole person feeling listened to and respected through that process. And that to me is a critical because, uh, and in my participation and attendance at so many events, um, creates an atmosphere that uh, people are very comfortable with talking to me about most anything sure. and being comfortable with raising issues with me because uh, I learned so much. Um, individuals who behave in a manner that um, uh, uh, kind of kills the messenger, mm -hmm. um, destroys all the opportunities that they have to uh, be a, uh, a, a learner and to be effective because people will have trepidation about um, uh, raising an issue that may not be good news. Sure. And, uh, uh, and there's, there's always going to be days when uh, or issues that um, are not the best news, but sure. you receive them, you open, you listen, and you respect and thank them for sharing the information. And uh, that for me is uh, uh, something that I think uh, individuals had to get used 
used to. And uh, and, and I know in observing uh, Vicki's interaction, it's the same issue that people will feel comfortable with engaging the superintendent and not feeling like um, they're um, going to have their head bit off by. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> that right, that's right. that that to <laughs> no. me is um, is a style <laughs> issue that um, I think is so often forgotten in uh, in leadership is um, uh, humanity being humane and being a listener and uh, sure. uh, Steve Eliason just last night uh, and part of recognition for me spoke about the whole issue of, um, of the ultimate of being a listener and I pride myself in that and and I observe that in Vicki and that to me is uh, critical. Sure well you've also got a mind like a steel trap I mean you can remember <laughs> you have brought up things about this district over or your over your time here and coming mm -hmm. on the show you've brought up things that I have forgotten <laughs> and you know well, it's kind of my job to know that <laughs> <laughs> well that's true that's true but kind of mine as well yeah, right um, you know but one of the things that I think is so very impressive about you Stan is that you know you made a point to get to know the names of and therefore faces of Pretty much everyone in the district, mm. and and I, you know, this is a big district. How many employees are in it? About thirteen, twelve, thirteen hundred people. Okay, mm -hmm. not as big as what you oh, have yes. been dealing with, but, but clearly a lot of people. Yeah. And, and with uh, ten thousand students and getting to know, it's it's important that people recognize and be recognized, and sure. uh, it's it's very comfortable. And uh, that's the hardest part about leaving is I have a big family here. A big family of community Absolutely. of uh, and um, uh, walking away from this family makes it very difficult because uh, I, um, I I can't go anywhere without being encountered with somebody who um, wants to talk to me. Even in in these last weeks, it's um, it's a continuous um, uh, conversation with people about uh, how am I doing and and uh, and uh, what are your plans and uh, and uh, thank you. And I'm so grateful to the community for that uh, uh, understanding that uh, this is a big deal for me but um, uh, it is uh, uh, it's just a small deal for the school district it's, sure. uh, the district will do well in the future absolutely well some people may not know this but this is not the first time you've tried retirement right. you've yes. tried it twice previously <laughs> yeah, this correct? is my third the third act at it so uh, is um, your wife gonna make you stick to retirement this well, time? well I promised six months so <laughs> I have uh, I have um, uh, I, I have turned down um, uh, uh, a number of opportunities that would have had me to work next Monday and, oh, uh, yes, and, and I said no 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 I'm, uh, <laughs> I, I really did make a promise and uh, uh, she continues to do her next National international consulting, but that is usually five days of uh, presentations in a month, or four to five, and um, uh, and then uh, she um, spends a lot of time preparing. But I, uh, no, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to, um, uh, uh, as I call it, um, uh, reorganizing the garage. There you go, <laughs> and maybe you'll find some other portions of the right. house too sure. to, to right. reorganize. You know, you're a multitasker, oh, and, yes. and as another multitasker, I can appreciate that. Uh, but you know, there's also time. And, and I know um, I read in the Northwestern. I think that's where I read it. That you know you have a difficult time going to movies because you can't, can't you can't, can't do something else while you're in there. Right. And see, I I hope you now as a multitasker, I can do that. I can, you know, I'll be working on multiple mm -hmm. things at once. Mm -hmm. But I know it's important for mm -hmm. me anyhow. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for a lot of people to just slow way down just do one thing that's mm. enjoyable and so my hope sure. for you Stan is that you can do that uh, I'll figure <laughs> at some, point. some of that out but no it's um, uh, I'd much rather wait t for it to be available on uh, downloading it on television at home because then I can do two other things while I'm watching it <laughs> sure well and I know you plan to do some traveling the last right. time you were on the show you talked about traveling mm -hmm. um, where your travel is going to take you to? Well, I'm uh, I'm planning um, to um, follow um, my spouse to um, Lebanon. She's doing a number of projects oh. there, and um, and I want to extend it in being able to visit Israel, and uh, and I long to go back to both Germany and Italy and Austria again. And so, uh, but um, each of those I'm very comfortable in there. Um, uh, my German is far better than my Italian, but it's um, uh, but it's uh, I'm very comfortable with European travel, and uh, uh, but. But um, I've never had a chance to go to Israel, and when you're that close at Lebanon, uh, you might as well um, go a little bit south and um, uh, do that. So. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. So. Well, at least you're not heading 
more into the Middle East, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, there, there are uh, lots of turbulent, times, turbulent there. times, yeah. But um, it's, um, it's, uh, it's a part of um, exploring the world that I really appreciate. Mm -hmm, so. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about, too, there is a, a fundraiser currently. It's called Match for Mac. Yes. Tell folks about that. Well, uh, the, it, we had a, a, a donor in the community uh, who um, offered uh, uh, to our, our school district foundation through the community foundation um, a $20,000 match if um, the community before between um, uh, beginning of June and uh, uh, with kind of being capped on June 14th when they had a celebration on my behalf uh, and by June 30th to um, uh, meet $20,000 contribution while well, it's well exceeded and uh, I believe the last time I looked at uh, uh, match now there's some 40 uh, because of the $20,000 contribution some $43,000 um, uh, that we, uh, we have been raised on uh, uh, in my name for the uh, for the uh, school district foundation and uh, uh, and uh, I'm very grateful to so many people in the community uh, who chose to donate that it's um, uh, it will um, serve in the future both uh, uh, some of the principal of it but uh, uh, but uh, interest earned on it will be a benefit to uh, children Children in the future in the Oshkosh Area School District. Sure. Mm -hmm. Now, since this show is going to start airing after the end of June 30th, if someone still wants to make Absolutely. a contribution, right. and where the do goal, they go to do that? Um, they could go to um, uh, on the district website or to mm -hmm. um, or just simply contact the uh, uh, Oshkosh Area School District, um, uh, and uh, they will be directed to uh, an appropriate person to uh, to uh, assist in that. But no, the uh, the June 30th deadline was just to make that twenty. Thousand dollar match contributions on top of that will be uh, gleefully accepted. At any okay, time. <laughs> and uh, for those listening to this on the radio, the um, Oshkosh Area School District's website is oshkosh.k12.wi.us. And if you're watching it on television, you can see it up on the screen right now. But again, for folks on the radio, oshkosh.k12.wi.us. Stan, what do you want your legacy to be when you leave here? I, my legacy is to have um, uh, Vicki to be the most successful superintendent and um, uh, in helping Oshkosh uh, community continue to, uh, and the school district, of course, to continue to grow. Um, um, my only worry would have been if we would have not been in the position to have an excellent superintendent where suddenly all this work would suddenly dive down. And um, uh, I have uh, I've repeatedly said that um, uh, as I've gotten to know Vicki, the more comfortable is is to turn it over to Vicki and enjoy watching it continue to excel. And that's Are you going really to have in your garage while you're reorganizing uh, a, a Mac phone? So that, right, yeah. <laughs> so, I, so that if Vicki uh, runs into I, trouble, she yeah, can no, press I, the I, button and I told Vicki she can put me on speed dial, but she can. Um, uh, I have uh, I have offered and uh, subject to extension a five year extended warranty on my assistance, and that um, uh, I'm sure Vicki will do well on her own. But um, Vicki knows that um, if any issues come along, are saying, you know, you forgot to tell me about this, um, <laughs> which I've tried to remember everything I could on uh, the issue that um, uh, my. Uh, my my uh, phone and, uh, and door, and uh, there are several people on issues. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to uh, figure out the schedule. I hope it's not the uh, uh, first winter snow uh, storm, but um, the um, Oshkosh Public Museum folks have had me, because I've been serving on their board, have had me as their, um, their uh, doorman in tuxedo and white gloves, welcoming people to the fall gala or to the holiday gala every year. And they have um, been working on establishing in the date because they uh, they said it wouldn't be the same if um, if that gala wasn't uh, I wasn't there at the door with um, one other partner with uh, I own uh, because of being on concert hall stages I own um, both long tail and short uh, uh, tuxedos and so uh, uh, so I uh, they they've talked to me about coming by in November uh, maybe by sooner but uh, at least that night in November to um, uh, to assist them in uh, celebrating their their it's a holiday fundraiser that sure. uh, uh, the public museum does and so well, they maybe you and Vicki can both do it yeah Vicki <laughs> I Vicki I'm sure because of all of her performance must have access at least to a tuxedo I got tired of renting them I finally bought some <laughs> well the one that you're not wearing the one that you're not wearing you can uh, no, let I think her that, use yes, we'll have to do some yeah, alterations do. Yes. But, you know, <laughs> since you have two yes, yes. But, um, uh, you know before 
before we get back to talking to Vicki, I, I just, I said this before we started taping, and I wanted to say it on air because I think I share feelings that are similar with many, many people who may have attended the high school graduations mm -hmm. recently. Um, you know, this, uh, of course, was the first year that they were held in the new arena, mm -hmm. the Menominee Nation Arena, and it was, A, such a wonderful venue because it was air-conditioned, mm -hmm. but you guys, I don't know how closely you worked with arena personnel and who came up with the various things that were done, but from beginning to end, I thought it was extremely well organized, very well thought out, all inclusive. I mean, any possible thing, if someone had a handicap, um, if they just needed to be on floor seating as opposed to bleachers, handicap parking, handicap seating, the air conditioning. I mean, everything was very well thought mm -hmm. out, very well planned. There was a lot of, you talk about communication, there was wonderful communication, I think, that went out to the public. Mm -hmm. And I, I say that, I don't know that um, everyone in the public got the same media releases that I did, um, but uh, from what I could see, it was just extremely well thought out and planned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, so thank you so much yeah. for that. The, um, the issue that we're continuing to explore, because there's no question that um, uh, uh, the both high schools consider it um, a fine location to go to. Um, we became overcrowded at North in the Fieldhouse and uh, no air conditioning at Call Farina uh, at the university. And um, uh, it, was, it was delightful because the leadership at um, Menominee Arena and the um, a basketball franchise were most willing on the uh, on the day of the groundbreaking, I, uh, when and when the franchise was approved, um, uh, I um, asked um, uh, the powers to be there. Could would you consider letting us use the arena, and could we get, reach an agreement on um, on uh, graduation? Uh, because in my first interview for the position uh, in 2012. Uh, uh, one of the board members said uh, there, there were two issues that needed to be fixed. Um, one was they had just recently come out of a very hot, overstuffed um, uh, 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 call for arena for a grad that you need to get air conditioning for call for get someplace else to hold it. And uh, the other one was the south side issue, and that was what became the um, building the addition to uh, Lakeside Elementary to create a full, comprehensive um, uh, uh, school. Both uh, one we got halfway through my tenure year here and um, uh, and the other one it took me till the sixth year uh, to get to that stage but, but we did have air conditioning. <laughs> well, but thank you for but that. the but the issue is is truly one of um, uh, having great community partners again because uh, that could only come about because there is a uh, uh, the community owners of the basketball franchise and um, uh, were of the opinion that this was a good uh, good venue and one of the things it, it's great promotion because so many people were at graduation who had never been to the arena before and it gave them That's at, at uh, free of charge the opportunity to explore the arena uh, mm -hmm. and to uh, to do so so that um, that was a, was a, a win -win. good win-win mm -hmm. uh, for everyone yeah. and uh, uh, the one thing that we're looking at and that's really the issue and they face that all the time is um, is parking and um, uh, and uh, for um, there not enough parking and when you have two events uh, that are um, uh, that we stationed about uh, three hours apart um, as you're kind of rushing people from west to or the first school uh, to leave so that we can clear the arena and um, uh, move the next group in. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I was used to doing that because back in Minnesota we and uh, several of our uh, school districts um, we uh, used uh, Target uh, Center, uh, which is the home of the Minnesota Timberwolves basketball, which holds 14,000 people. And um, we would have three graduations from the same district on, on the same day. We had a noon, 3, and 6 p.m. graduation. Wow. And um, we could easily, but the, but there uh, there are thousands of parking spaces and parking ramps next door. But uh, that um, that was the only limitation. And the rest of it, it, it'll come about and mature into being a good continuum. But you're right. We were so pleased with the outcome. Sure. Thank Wonderful. You. Well, uh, so Vicki, you know, you're you're coming here from Florida, 
Um, we have a smaller budget, we have smaller students, we have less staff. Um, what made you, besides the cold weather, <laughs> what made you choose to come here? What, what was it that attracted you to Oshkosh? The community. Okay. Absolutely the community, hands down. Um, many years ago when my husband was um, a middle school principal, um, at that time he was principal of the only inner city uh, Title I school in Orlando. Title I being where it has a substantial amount of students with free, own free and reduced lunch. And it truly was a school of the have and the have nots uh, mm -hmm. because to the zoning of the, of the school, um, part of the zone um, went to neighborhoods that were definitely less desirable um, mm -hmm. to live in, a lot of violence um, within that community. Um, and then there was another community um, that was definitely a desirable area, yeah, uh, as you might yeah. say, a higher socioeconomic status. However, they had pulled their children out of school. So he had to go in there with community building, as you might say, had a plan for it and everything. Um, so over a period of time, um, started up a couple of academies, um, one being in the sciences, one being in the visual and performing arts. Okay. Um, and this was his recruitment strategy, as you might say, to get the students back into the school, which was great because not only did they become an avid national demonstration site, um, but now he has these tracks going on. Within the science track, yeah. there was an aviation component to that. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So what had happened is, um, and the teacher who taught it is an actual pilot, um, so we were able to do the simulation, create a simulation type labs um, scenario for the students there. We had a local philanthropist um, who heard <laughs> about this and was just completely excited about it and said, you know, these children need to have an opportunity to get out of Orlando and really have that chance to see outside of where they are. And so for every child who could not afford it, um, but was in that aviation club, sponsored those children to come up here to Oshkosh for the EAA program. Oh, okay. And um, so I, w I was able to attend one of those trips, uh, but they had ha that happened several times. Um, I got to know one of the coordinators from here on the back end, you know, making yeah. quite a few phone calls, you know, sure, <laughs> yeah, taking care yeah. of logistics and stuff like yeah, that. So yeah. I was able to really, um, over those a period of time, just communicating with a variety of different people and just how respectful people were and polite and um, in a positive way. Yeah. And, yeah. and um, coming up here and just seeing it and witnessing it and you know it's the real deal it's not right. you know superficial right mm -hmm. and um so when oshkosh came open i looked at it and went that, that just feels right yeah it just feels right it and was your calling it really was and, and and um and i have no qualms in saying this you know i'm i am definitely a god fearing woman mm -hmm. um and every, you know, he, he gives us doors, right? And he yeah. gives us all yeah. those opportunities and we have, it's up to us if we pray on it and if, sure. if we decide to go through that door. Sure. And um, so I was able to go through that door and when I did, um, everything, everything is just clicking right into place. The relationship with Stan, um, the relationship I've been able to build thus far with our school board, with executive staff, uh, mm -hmm. with some a variety of different community members that I've had an opportunity to meet, um, business leaders. Sure. Everything is working well. You know, one of my friends just asked me later this week, so are you getting nervous yet? And I said, no, no, not, not yet. Uh, you know, because at this point in time, I'm at peace. Right, right. It fits. So, yes. God will show you the way. Yes. Between God and Stan, you are in the best possible <laughs> hands, you know, that, that you could possibly be in. And, right. you know, let's face it, God knew long before you that you were coming here. Of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course. Um, I think so. that's obvious. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you consider to be the greatest thing that you accomplished in, your, in the district that you're just coming from? Sure. Um, <clears throat> you know, because when we're in K-12 education or, or PK-12 education, what is it that we're really trying to strive for our students? And when you look at that, ultimately the capstone is making sure that they graduate from high school, college or career ready, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that, whether that means that they're going to a technical program, whether they're going to a collegial program, whether um, if they're not in that, they're going into some type of career. Right. Um, so with my students with disabilities, because that was the area I supervised, or one of the mm -hmm. areas I supervised, uh, we uh, now for at least two years had the highest graduation rate 
for our students with disabilities that the district had ever seen. Wow. Um, we had some, it, within that period, we also had the lowest. Now it, it fluctuated a sure, little bit from there sure. for the dropout rate. Um, in addition to that, uh, at for in, in Florida, because we're county based, we have mm -hmm. a lot of large districts, sure. um, but we there are seven very large urban districts. Okay. And um, so of the urban districts, I had one of the highest inclusion rates wow. in, the, in the classroom. And that's significant to me because I want our children, um, I wanted children who had unique abilities mm -hmm. to ha be in their natural environments and to have access, to have the same, exp have the adults having the same expectation that they have with non-disabled peers that they have with uh, those who have some type sure. of disability, right? Yep, yep. And um, so that capstone mm -hmm. of really doing that, and then um, even this past, uh, probably January, February, thereabouts, they were, uh, the state released our um, college and career placements. And um, again, we were one of the tops um, for wow. the large, one of the tops for the very large urban districts. One, that is just one. Now, what do you attribute that to? Because those are two pretty lofty things. Yes. You know, they're lofty goals, and you've not only met them, but you've surpassed them. Mm -hmm. So what do you attribute that to? Um, the core belief that all children can be successful. You know, that mm. the, the sky is the limit for so many of our children and that we, we just have to ensure that we're providing the proper supports and it's through our school-based administrators, through our teachers, through our paraprofessionals, through our parents, our community partners, that we're able to ensure that those supports are in place for our students. Okay. Um, and that they, so we can empower them to be the best that they can be, right? Sure, sure. Um, and you know, for some students, it may not mean that they're going to college, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, because yeah. they may have a disability that is so, so significant um, that they don't have that available to them. But for them, mm -hmm. we've given them employability skills they have a lot of the fundamental skills that are extremely important to be able to live on their own mm -hmm. or yeah, live within yeah. a community, uh, sure. right? Uh, and so really empowering our students to be able to have that. And that is the best that they are going to have. Um, sure, because, and, but it's very meaningful for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm very passionate about that. And so to get there, um, you're right, it was, it, they were lofty goals. Um, and so we did a lot of strategic planning on that. Um, okay. We were very, and as we talk in the future, you'll probably hear that word from me a lot. It was, but that's I'm good. Strategic. You have to have plans, you know, <laughs> yeah. and they have to have a certain strategy to them. Right. So strategic planning is, I mean, you can't succeed, right. you know, no matter how lofty or small the goal might be, you can't succeed without con some kind of strategic plan. Right. So, so we had some short-term goals and we had some longer-term goals. Mm -hmm. um, and we took a very purposeful approach to it. Um, and uh, and we didn't rush into it. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I, this is my end goal, yeah. um, but it's not going to happen overnight. Right. And right. But at the same time, we're making forward progress towards yeah. that goal yeah. and we're monitoring it and we're and we're paying attention to it and we're giving the attention that is that's needed and we being the adults right 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 um, and ensuring that through those partnerships and through the community engagement through the parental engagement that we're able to really have that focus sure. and listen uh, you yeah. know what are the concerns how do we overcome that yeah um, and really plan it out yeah you have probably answered this question two dozen or more times, <laughs> um, but I'm going to ask it because I haven't had a chance to meet you prior to sure, today. So, sure. um, so what do you consider to be the greatest strength that you're bringing to the, or strengths that you're bringing to the district? Um, relationship. I am definitely a people person. Uh, okay. I, I, I thrive on relationships and positive relationships, mm -hmm. I'll clarify. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, right, because there can be some not so positive. <laughs> um, so that is and um, really having purpose um, in what we do. So uh, being very strategic mm -hmm. and how we go forward um, is something that I would say in my bail of wicks, as you might say, is, sure. is a core strength of mine. Yep. Um, keeping that laser-like focus and, and always going is this in the best interest of our children? Is it truly in, and how? 
Mm -hmm. So knowing how to ask questions and when to ask questions and what type of questions we need to be asking right. to really get to the root cause or to get to a root, what I call a root analysis, mm -hmm. um, so that we know that what we're doing is in the best interest of children. Right, right. Um, and the other thing that I think uh, you'll hear me say, and you'll hear me, you'll hear me say it a lot, is that no one person is greater than anyone else. Mm -hmm. We just have different roles and responsibilities. That's right. So let's embrace it and let's talk it through and yeah. let's communicate and let's see how we can work together in yeah. order to benefit our children. Because the school district is nothing more than a microcosm of this community mm -hmm. when you think about it. Yeah. And so when, when, you're, when, you, when you're looking at that, as we're helping our children, we're naturally helping our community as well. Mm -hmm. and it, that, so the building community through education truly is building community through education. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and so those are some of the things that I feel as though I'm, I'm bringing to the table. Okay. Um, you know, before you came here mm -hmm. and before you had your role as associate superintendent in Florida, mm -hmm. and I have to read this because it is a very long title. You, <laughs> you worked as, as the district down there as their senior director for accountability, research, and assessment. Um, so you were using data to kind of guide uh, curriculum and strategic planning, as, mm -hmm. as you just mentioned, um, in research projects and so forth, um, to a successful point. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's one of the things you did. How will that benefit benefit you here? Oh, I think a lot, a, a tremendous amount, because we are an extremely data-rich um, society. But what data should we be paying attention to, and mm -hmm. when? Um, and really using it, uh, and that, and I think that's important. Yes, I am definitely a data-based, research-based um, decision maker, because mm -hmm. uh, I like being an informed decision maker. And that's the only way to be. Yes, should be right. Yep. Um, but you have to know what to look at and when to look at it. And that you also have to recognize that there's a lot more to everything than just a number. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more to a child than a test score. Yeah. Um, and so you have to take a, a nice balance of that, is, sure. is taking a look at the hard numbers, right, as well mm -hmm. as the soft, mm -hmm. softer side of things, of, right. of what's going on. Right. And so um, I'm bringing to the district those experiences and really knowing that um, that's going to be important because as I'm listening and as I'm learning and as I'm continuing with our relationships uh, with the community, it's also looking at the data in order to help guide um, some of the conversations in order to know what are some of those questions that we need to know, the probing questions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I can listen and I'm getting the right information. Uh, yeah. Because again, we're data rich, right? Right. Um, so let's have purpose behind what we're really kind of looking at, and so that's something that I, obviously I'm going to be bringing with me um, sure. from prior experiences, and um, just absolutely, I enjoy that. But there's a lot more to me than just a number, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> or a data person, as, as you might there say. is for all of us. Right. Right. You know, I think that's one thing that in in today's society. I, I think people can appreciate that, what you just said, because, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't matter what we do. If we go to the bank or we go to uh, a hospital or we do whatever, we are so thought of as a number. The mm -hmm. first thing they want to know is if you go to a doctor's office or call them, they want to know your date of birth. So that's a number, right? right? And, you know, then they pull up your chart and they see your account number. And, and that's true at the bank, too. Well, you know, what's your account number? It's, mm -hmm. it's all about... And, and I say that knowing that, of course, they need to know those things. Sure. But it's all about a number, a number, a number. And while we all have numbers associated with us, mm -hmm. and he's showing me a number right now, telling me we've got 10 minutes left in this show. <laughs> um, so as, 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 of course, we all have to have, a numbers, have numbers associated with each and every one of us. But you're right. We are more than that. Right. And when people look at you, beyond just a number, mm -hmm. that's when you get to know the person and what strengths that they can bring right. to a district or a community or what have you. Right. Right. You know, and, and I like what you said about everybody is equally important as everyone else. Um, I, I do a lot of animal rescue work in my spare time. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I look at the commercials on TV where people are pulling animals out of 
hoarding situations yeah. or puppy mill situations yeah. or just disaster torn areas mm -hmm. from floods, hurricanes, what have you. Mm -hmm. And I think, oh geez, you know, they are so great for being in there doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm in a different role. I don't just donate to the organizations, but I actually have you know, volunteer titles associated with my name uh -huh. and um, as opposed to a number. <laughs> and, and I look at them and I see what they're doing and I think, wow, you know, I wish that I could be in there doing that because that's so important. And as I've stated that to some of the people who I actually work with who are higher than me, mm -hmm. they say, but what you're doing is boots on the ground stuff too. Right. And you know, while we couldn't do that without them, we couldn't do the other things that we do without what you're doing. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I have to keep telling myself that at times. Absolutely. Because it's hard to feel like you're sort of getting lost by what people see in the media, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like what you said about that. Um, what do you think that, do you think you're going to be using a, a Mac phone to call him? <laughs> Especially in your first year or so? I am more than sure that there are going to be times where I'm, I'll be reaching right. out to Stan. Yeah. Uh, because in order to build and to continue the momentum and, and to co continue to go forward, um, it's always important to know where you've been, mm -hmm. you know. And um, while there's a lot of uh, individuals who have been in the district for a very long time um, and know a lot of that history, um, perspective uh, mm -hmm. can be uh, slightly different as well uh, right. based upon your level of responsibility. Sure. And yeah. so I, I know that that's, that's something mm -hmm. I value. It's something that I'm, I'm extremely sure. grateful to for Stan on, um, to mm -hmm. just to allow that so that, mm -hmm. you know, if I get into a situation, Okay. Here's what's going on. What's your per this is what I'm. What's your, this is what I'm thinking. What's your perspective mm -hmm. on this? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and have that relationship. And I'm also um, extremely fortunate in that my the superintendent from where I'm coming from, um, I have that that type of relationship as well. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, you know because she'll be able to provide some perspective for me as well. Uh, mm -hmm. And and just help balance that out. So I have yeah. a very good support system. Sure. Um, and then there's, of course, through the state. But, um, so there's a lot of, of, of things, but oh yeah, absolutely. There's sure. gonna be some times sure. I know I'm gonna be reaching out yeah. to them. Yeah. And the first call for help is, uh, Vicki is uh, blessed with the association with um, a strong executive team mm -hmm. that um, uh, has, uh, has really been um, my blessing through this work as well. And the fact that um, uh, no one, no one does any of this alone. Mm -hmm. uh, you're constantly right. working together with yep. others, and uh, 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 those who don't succeed are those who try to run, fly solo, or to be the everything to all people, and or to be the great. Um, you know, I'm I'm in charge. I'm you know, I'm the hero here. Mm -hmm. No, um, the reality is you partner, and I I frequently use the issue of orchestra conductor as example of uh, superintendent. Um, uh, you don't you don't play a single instrument but you are constantly you are calling upon different sections of the orchestra exactly. and different mm -hmm. uh, 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 instrumentation within the orchestra uh, to make the good music together and uh, uh, that to me and uh, I was never a, a, a band director a music teacher but I uh, my love of music is I've been uh, constantly in music from uh, probably uh, uh, second, third grade on, mm -hmm. and and uh, I always thought of that uh, that issue of um, uh, the the working together because no mm -hmm. band or orchestra or choir sounds good unless it's uh, it's led and coordinated, and the superintendent sure. is that mm -hmm. coordinator um, to make sure it's all going in the same direction and has mm -hmm. all the various musicians mm -hmm. in that band or orchestra that exactly. that are needed. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. So I even feel very fortunate. Um, you know, with the school board, uh, because they have been just so open and and and, and uh, so positive, and saying, okay, if you need perspective on the, the, you know mm -hmm. certain things right. or something, that just let us know. Yeah, right. uh, you know, because that gives you a different perspective that you know from a, mm -hmm. a, someone who's mm -hmm. not in the school system right. or space right. per se. Sure. Well, sure, and and you sort of alluded to it before, Vicky. You know, you have to in order to know where you're going, you have to know where you've come from. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, you don't have that history right. yet, right. but you will. I will. <laughs> I will. You will have it, um, and Stan. <laughs> We'll see that you get it, and everyone else will help yeah. to see that you get it 
it too. So, right. um, including people in the community. You know, right. I graduated from this school district, but I, I don't have any children in the district. I right. have nephews and, and a niece in the district. Uh, well, they're out now, but mm -hmm. you know, um, but I still care about what's going on in the schools. Right. Mm -hmm. I pay, you know, that the biggest part of our property tax bill mm -hmm. is for mm -hmm. school districts. Mm -hmm. And right. so therefore I have a vested interest right. in what's happening in our school mm -hmm. districts. Right. right. And you know, some people say, well, you know, if you don't have kids, you really don't care about what's going on in the schools. Well, you should. Right. Mm -hmm. right. You should because right. your tax dollars yeah, are going yeah. toward you're, that. You are a stockholder in that uh, yeah, operation. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. Right. So sure. um, you know, so I I've given you some ideas oh, over yes. the years right. about <laughs> things that I thought were wrong or yeah, not so right. wrong. Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. and, and you know, Stan, as I mentioned, has been on many, many times. Mm -hmm. And I hope that you will be free I and, so. and um, mm -hmm. willing to come back on as Absolutely. well. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think Stan can tell you I'm not a gotcha kind of person. Yeah. Oh. You know, I may not always know the questions exactly that I want to ask mm -hmm. beforehand. Mm -hmm. I have a general idea. But I try never to, you know, blindside anybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, a few politicians from time to time, maybe. <laughs> uh, and and yeah. you have to do that sometimes with politicians. Sure. But, um, you know, folks in your position, no. I, I just, I, I don't, you don't get anywhere by doing that to someone right. and, and mm -hmm. developing that kind of reputation yeah. with folks. Mm -hmm. right. So, right. Um, I've always looked forward to coming and joining you. It's, um, it's something that I, I've told Vicki about that it's, um, it's a, a very pleasant experience and it's a nice, um, uh, comfortable environment in which to uh, uh, share with the public uh, uh, the things that are going on in schools. But you also dig into the insights of what makes superintendents tick. And I think that's, that's mm -hmm. important too because mm -hmm. uh, 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 sometimes people don't get to know us in that way and and it's been a blessing for me because people have gotten to know me because of that doing this and they'll get to know Vicki because of doing this and mm -hmm. that's another asset uh, that's available in the community. So. Sure. Mm -hmm. I remember the very first show that I did with you is right about when you came here mm -hmm. and uh, we don't have a great deal of time left but um, you started out by, t I, I said, tell us a little bit about yourself, and you immediately started out telling me how you start out your day on a treadmill. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> so, I mean, that was the very first thing that I learned about Stan mm -hmm. Mack II, right. for sure, <laughs> for sure. So it, it um, makes me think better the rest of the day. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and, and that's good. Yeah, and, it, um, and it's also, um, uh, I, I fail to stay awake for the 10 o'clock news, but on uh, digital um, recordings, I can catch the news that was the night before when I was sleeping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Technology is great, right? Yeah, it is. So, <laughs> so what, um, you know, in our remaining couple of minutes here, Vicki, what would you like um, viewers or listeners, if they're listening to this on the radio, mm -hmm. what, what would you like them to know about you, where you're coming from, where you'd like to see the district going during your tenure here? which we hope will be very long. Yes, mm -hmm. likewise. So. <laughs> um, I think it's, and I've been accentuating on this, in, in that I want people to know that, you know, I'm, I'm very open and that feel free to come and talk with me. Um, I want that. I want people to feel comfortable around me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I really am trying to make sure that I seek to understand sure. and um, see larger pictures of what's going on. Uh, Stan has done a, a very nice job and really having community um, and, and working towards having the community involved with the schools and the schools involved with the community. So those are things that I want to continue to, as far as that forward momentum is concerned. Sure, sure. There are some things, you know, I don't know, I don't know just yet, right? Because I still have to learn. Of course. And, uh, and those are some of the things that we're going to be utilizing, you know, the conversations that we're going to be utilizing in order to give us direction. Um, our current strategic plan right now, this is the last year of our current strategic plan. So this next year, over the course, and the, actually the next few months, we're going to be having some open forums. We're going to have some conversations. And it's going to be with a variety of different groups. Um, yeah. Because this is the type of information that we're going to have to bring to our school board to help give them information to say, okay, these are the goals that we want to set. Sure. Um, and then from there, going in and say, okay, how are we going to get there? Um, roadmap that out, as you might say. Sure. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, you know, we do have a facility study um, that is underway right now. So really taking a, a close look at that. Um, because uh, unfortunately, yeah, some of our facilities, you know, 
yeah. over 100 years old. You that's know? true. That's yeah. very true. And so that's just some of it foreshadowing. I know we're almost out of time, so I'm yeah. not going to go any further. Sure, but I have, sure. I have some ideas. Next time. Uh, next okay. time. We can do that. Very good. Well, thank you so mm -hmm. much for being here tonight. Thank you for and, having me. And, uh, you know, I, I hope that we will be as blessed with you in our district as we have been with Stan and, and his thank predecessors. You. I have no doubt. I think the school board has made a great choice. Oh, thank you so, so much. So welcome to the community. And uh, we will have you back for sure. Absolutely. Thank you. And Stan, I don't know what to say, but thank you for yeah, what you have given to the district and the mm -hmm. community overall. Mm -hmm. And I hope that you will feel comfortable staying in touch because um, right. I'd love to hear about your travels yeah. and so forth. Sure. We'll, we'll so. maybe um, combine an effort to deal with the, um, uh, kind of those experiences and um, uh, have a conversation sometime on those issues. But um, uh, you are uh, truly a blessing to the community by doing this uh, program. And um, it creates another forum that is so important and that's to communicate with all of our publics um, uh, for doing so uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, I would uh, love to have you finish that, but they're telling me we've got to wrap done. up. So. Okay, but well thank, thank you. you so much. So very much. <laughs> sure. And thank you and for thank being you. here and coming Appreciate to the community. Sure. That's going to do it for this time. We will see you next time. Take good care and keep your eye on us. We've got our eye on us.